So this is a Lanair waste oil heater. Uh, it's a 300,000 BTU waste oil heater. Basically, dump any type of oil in it, burns it, and heats the shop. Now I do have an old one of these, but I thought it was time to update. Uh, same BTU, just a little bit different style and about 30 years newer. It does look a little bigger, but who knows what's on the inside of the box here. Obviously we've got a tank and stand, some chimney stuff, some accessories to put it all together, and then this big box is the heater itself. I mean this box looks huge compared to my old one. We'll give you a look at the old one. So in the corner there, that is my old heater. It's got the same setup, the tank below, and then the heater up above. This one is what's called a ductable unit. You can see how it's got that plenum box coming off the bottom and I just put some elbows on it to direct it. Normally how this one would work is that would actually be up in the rafters and you'd hook your duct system into the bottom of this machine. Now the new one's a little different. It's not a ductable unit. It's just got like a hole on the front of it with some louvers directional louvers, and then that's how you point where you want the heat to go, I guess. Anyway, let's get this box opened and uh, see if it's really that big or if there's a lot of packing material in there. That's a big unit. This definitely has a bigger footprint than uh, my old heater does, where my old heater is just kind of in line with the tank. This one is definitely going to be bigger than the tank. Hopefully being 30 years newer means it's going to be a little more efficient as well. I think it will be. I guess we'll find out when we get it hooked up. Now, I'm not putting it in the same spot that my old heater is. I'm putting it on the opposite side. It'll make it easier to hook everything up, give me a little more space. So we got the heater in yesterday and uh, we're just going to unbox it and see what everything is because it's all packed up right now so we'll get everything, all the cardboard apart, all the boxes out, all the shrink wrap off and uh, after we get done with that we'll start going through it and see what's what. Alright so we got most of it unboxed, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start uh, getting everything out of the cardboard boxes. I mean there's just so many of them. Most of it's chimney but there is some other stuff. Uh, the motor for the oil pump and stuff like that. Oh boy, the alarm's about to go off. There we go. Rookie move. Anyway, we're going to get some of this stuff unboxed. We'll get the motor mounted up to the top of the oil tank and uh, try to get some of that stuff done. Once we start to uh, hook things up, we'll be back.
So I figure I'll give you guys an update where the heater stands. Now, you saw I kind of fast forwarded a lot of that. Uh, it's really easy. I mean, there's not much to hook up. I'm not done hooking it up yet, but the motor just bolts on there. You've got your copper line here, the filter. I mean, it's all pretty self-explanatory. I did, however, you know, you saw in the video that pipe was super long up to here. I went and got a shorter piece there because these arms, I actually went and cut them down seven inches. You can see I've got the scraps here. And the reason I did that is the way I'm gonna hook this up, and I know it's not square, but the reason I hooked that up is I actually have a panel that goes in that window with a hole cut in it. That's how I cut out my other one. I've got it over there. I'm currently priming it to uh, prevent it from rusting. I gotta square this thing up. I wanted to run it at an angle, but I think that what's gonna happen is the pipe's not gonna go out of there nicely. So I do have to square it up, unfortunately, and uh, I gotta pick up a bender because I tried bending this by hand and things did not go well. So pretty simple. Got a strainer that goes down in there, comes out, comes to the filter, goes around, goes to the pump here, and then out of the pump comes this copper line, goes in to this regulator, and then out of the regulator, any of the pressure that it doesn't use sends it back to the tank, but out of the regulator and just goes up into the motor, right into that fitting right there. I do have to go get some electrical line. Since my heater was on the other side of the shop, the line doesn't reach. So um, yeah, I gotta go pick up some line. Other than that, I mean, that's pretty much it. I gotta get electric over to it. The air compressor's right next to it, so that's not gonna be an issue. The only thing holding me up is the electrical line. It is the weekend, so I gotta wait until Monday to go get some of the electrical wire. But that is where it's going to sit, kind of. It's gonna be tweaked a little bit. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Looks pretty nice over there. My other heater is gone, got rid of it today. So there's a lot of space over there. Anywho, it's just about ready to go in. Um, had to pick up a couple things. The only thing this kit didn't come with, you can see, I've still got a ton of chimney stuff to go through. Comes with all the chimney. This, I mean, this kit pretty much comes with everything you need. Got chimney stuff, everything for there. The only thing that wasn't with it are the plugs for the bottom. And I talked to the salesperson. He said, hey, they're supposed to be in there. That's our bad, but they were like a dollar at the hardware store. So I'm not worried about it. Went and picked those up. I have not installed them yet because I don't wanna put the plug on there yet. I'm still gonna to have to push it with the tractor. I don't want that plug being proud of the tank and accidentally breaking something. So I'll wait to put those plugs in until everything is set. But that's it. I'm gonna pick up a tubing bender for that half inch copper line because I want it to look nice. And then uh, next time we're back, we're gonna be just about ready to install this thing and get it fired up. So this tool is called a spring bender and uh, it's a super cheap alternative to buying a like tool bender. Uh, you know, the ones that got the arms on them, you bend them. This is about, I think it's like seven bucks for a pack of three different sizes versus like 120, 130 for the tool bending. Um, tool, I guess you could say. So you can see where we're at. We moved the heater over into the corner. I've got all the copper tube bent now. Um, there's really only a couple things left to do and that's wire the electric. I got to get the electric over from where my old heater was. I got rid of that the other day. And then I've got to do the chimney. Uh, I don't know what we're going to get done today. So yeah, chimney, electric, I don't know what we're gonna get to today. Maybe the electric, maybe the chimney. We'll see how much time I have. And yeah, stick around. So I wanna give you guys an update of where I stand on this new project here, this new heater project that's been going on for a couple days now. It's finally in place. And uh, I mean, I know it was in place earlier, but I needed to square it up. And uh, I got some of the chimney attached. So I'm no HVAC man, but I know that that needs to go on there somewhere. And it's supposed to be like two or three feet away from the heater. And unfortunately, I don't have enough room to put it in here that it would work. Now I went with single wall coming out to the dampener, I think that's called, or draft control, and then transferred it into double wall. And that's what goes outside. Now there is nothing hooked up outside yet. So that's what I'm gonna go work on. 
Um, I don't remember if the copper line was bent when we did the last video, but the copper line's all hooked up. So all I have left before we fire this heater up is to go finish that chimney, and then I gotta run my electrical lines from over there on the wall to over here, wire it, dump some oil in it, and uh, fire it up. So hopefully this all happens today. The wiring is gonna be easy. Um, the chimney's gonna take a little fiddling around outside. It's super cold, super windy out, so I'm excited to get this heater going. I'll be honest with you, I'm not gonna film anything outside just because it is so windy and cold. Um, but it's just a double wall, straight up the wall, and secure it to the building. I'm gonna go get that done, and then I'll show you what it looks like after. All right, so before we go outside, I wanna explain the chimney setup that I have. Now, this chimney is going to be temporary. Um, it is above the roof line, but it's only six, eight inches above the roof line. I do have another three foot stick of double wall that I'm gonna put on there. Unfortunately, I don't have a roof strap, and I don't wanna put that extra three foot on there because if it does get windy, I don't wanna have the chance of the chimney blowing off or something like that. So temporarily, I just have a three foot stick on there. It puts it a little bit above the chimney and uh, then the roof cap. When I run to the chimney store and grab a roof strap, I will put that on there and put that last three foot section I have right there in that box. So you can see, again, double wall going out and then we'll go outside. It is windy, so you might not be able to hear me. So you just gotta bear with me on that one. So there it is, like I said, uh, it's certainly not tall enough yet, but it's going to do to get this started up. Now I have that 90 hooked into that sheet metal that I have on the window, coming right through the window there. And that is holding the vertical piece with that strap. And uh, yeah, another three foot stick will go on there, but then I gotta run that roof strap to the roof over here. So once I get that roof strap, We'll put that up there. But that's what the exterior looks like as of right now. So the heater is pretty much set up. I mean, it's it's ready to run. I finished the electrical, it's super simple. There's literally two wires and a ground you gotta hook up. Inside the junction box that's on the control panel, you can't screw it up. I think earlier I mentioned that you need two lines. I was incorrect. My old heater required two lines because that was a ductible unit. One line was dedicated for the fan, the other line was dedicated for the heating unit. Now, since this is a non-ductible fan, it only requires one line of uh, 110 volts. So, it's ready. Uh, I gotta fill it with oil, but everything else is crudely done. Now, I still have to finish the chimney, and then also the thermometer, or thermostat, um, I have a thermostat up front, but my thermostat wire is not long enough, it didn't reach. So for the time being, to make sure everything runs, getting it tuned in and everything like that, I've just got the thermostat zip tied up to my pallet racking. Also, the air line is just kind of hanging behind there. I'm going to clean that up, probably buy an appropriate size air line so I don't have an extra 10 feet. Um, but everything is hooked up, everything's ready to go, and all we have to do is fill it with oil. Now, I get my oil from a lot of different places, uh, town highway garages, uh, maintenance shops. You, you pretty much just go around and ask and they'll give you 55 gallon drums of it for free. So if you're wondering where I get my oil from, just start driving around and asking. And also if you go to like Napa, Advance, AutoZone, a lot of times they'll give you oil out of their tank as well because they have to pay to get rid of it. Um, I prefer getting it from highway departments and maintenance shops, stuff like that, because they're held to a little bit of a higher standard where they're not going to be mixing coolant and all that in there. Uh, whereas if you get it from like Advanced Auto, who knows what was dumped in there. So I prefer maintenance shops, highway departments, but you, you take what you can get. So 55 gallon drums, we're going to load it on the forks with the tractor. Um, I've got them just sitting outside next to the shop, so I'll bring, uh, probably just start with one, 55 gallons should be plenty to get this thing fired up. Uh, and then we have to go through the process of priming the pump and everything like that. I'll show you how I can do that and then uh, we'll see if this thing will fire up.
All right, so the barrel's in. Now we gotta get it prepared to be dumped. So this is what I, I think is called a barrel wrench. And it, what it's designed to do is you put it on these tops here, and then you could just use this to undo the nut. I see a lot of guys like trying to use screwdrivers or channel locks. I mean, it, that'll work, but if you get a super tight one, like this one was pretty tight, you're gonna have a tough time. So then the other side, this is a vent. And when you pop this plastic cap off, that's what this end is for. That fits in there and then you can unscrew the vent. So this is kind of what I mad scientists together um, with just some PVC parts, a ball valve, and some flexible hosing. Basically how this works is this end screws into here. And then what I do is I actually tip this down on its side. And then I, again, roll it onto the forks. So this is sitting on its side on the forks, drive it up to the tank, you know, leaving this off, and then put this end into the tank, and let it rip. So while I'm tipping this on its side and everything like that, I usually leave the ball valve up, because if I tip it on its side with the ball valve down, this would actually sit lower than the bottom of the barrel. These are surprisingly easy to move around even when they're full. I don't, I don't know the physics behind it, but for some reason, they're, they're pretty darn easy to move. One, two, three. Okay, gotta move the tripod out of the way. See if we can dump some oil in. So, should twist a little bit to make it easy. Then we gotta turn the ball valve on. There you go, we're filling up. So I'll let it drain for like a minute or two, just so that oil level gets below that vent. And then once I believe that oil level's below that vent, I'll crack that vent and this will go a lot faster. So there's two holes on the bottom of these tanks. There's one here and then there's one on the opposite side near my air compressor. These are tank drains. So naturally oil is lighter than water. Water sinks to the bottom of oil. This is made so you can drain any water out of there if you do get water in your tank. I'm not expecting any of these. This is one of the nice barrels from a highway department. So I'm not expecting any water or antifreeze or anything like that in here but that's what these are made for. I usually drain mine on my old one when I was getting oil from like Napa and stuff like that. I drain it like once a week and the water that would come out is crystal clear. So I'm just going to check these connections. This one is obviously not dripping. I can see it not dripping, but I'm just gonna check the other one on the other side. That one isn't dripping either. Now that it's been draining for a couple minutes, what I'm gonna do is just open this vent just a hair. Put some air in, and this should go much faster. Now there's no air in the tube, and it's just flowing right in, no glugging anymore. So this tank that's attached to the bottom of the heater is a 215 gallon tank, which is unfortunate because I can't put full 55 gallon drums in there. I basically have to stop at three 55 gallon drums because that'll get me up to, what's that, 180, 170? I don't know, math, it's not, I'm not great at it. But I can't dump three in here, or I can't dump four in here to start because that would put me up at like 200 something just above it. Um, wait a minute, 50, 50, 50, 50 is 200, 
five times four is 20. Yeah, so four gallons is, or four 55 gallon drums is 220 gallons. This is 215. We'd have a five gallon overage. That's not a mess I wanna clean up. I'm gonna let this one drain out. I'm gonna get a second tank. We'll put 110 gallons in here. That'll be plenty to get me started. And uh, it'll run for a couple hours. Make sure everything's working good. So I'll be back with you guys when it's time to uh, get this thing primed. So it's time to prime the pump. And the instructions basically state, take this top off this nipple that comes up here behind your filter. I put a little funnel in there so I don't make a mess. And it says basically just, Fill it up until you know it comes out. I guess um, I'm anticipating making a mess. That's why I got a hog mat here. Uh, we'll try not to though. Oh, too fast! Like I said, I knew I'd make a mess. All right, can't say we didn't try to prime it. Let's see if the pump will do the rest. I think you're supposed to crack that line up there too, but. That's gonna make a hell of a mess. So, first thing we'll do is we'll just see if the pump can prime it on its own. And if not, then I guess we'll try to crack that upper line. So the pump is definitely spinning. We're building some oil pressure here. This oil pressure gauge is what I'm gonna keep an eye on. Well, I don't think there's two ways around it. I think I gotta crack this line here. Well, that line certainly is cracked now, so. So I went back and read the directions and I totally forgot there's a bleeder screw here. So we gotta bleed this first and then we can move on to this. Might have to run because I think once I close this bleeder, it's going to start pumping oil up, and I still have that line up top open, so it might be a wild ride. Oh boy! Oh no! Oh no! Well, I'm sure you heard it. I guess we got oil up at that top line now. I, th I knew that was gonna happen. So I got a mess to clean up, but I'm gonna get that line put back on. That's up there, that is now black and should be copper. And uh, we'll get this thing fired up, I guess. So in this next clip, what you're gonna hear me describing is the troubles I had first firing this up. When I went to first fire it up, it wouldn't fire. I thought I had hit record on the phone, but spoiler alert, I didn't. So, it didn't fire when I first tried it. I had to call customer service, and what you're gonna see now is what I went through with customer service to get this thing started up. So it's a couple days later, and technical support was open today, so I was able to give them a call and said, hey, I can't get my heater to run. What the heck? Lifetime support. You'll get that with something like this. So basically, the issue as I was having was uh, I'd fire up that thermostat and nothing would happen, right? So I took the thermostat out of it, hooked these two jumpers up, so when I cross these jumpers, it tricks the machine into thinking that, hey, there's this thermostat hooking up and it's calling for heat. Now, you see this piece of electrical tape here? Apparently, there was too much light getting in this hinge and what it was doing, there's a little eye inside this box here that tells the machine that, hey, there's a flame there, we don't need to do anything, everything's running great. What was happening is that light was getting in there, tricking that sensor, thinking that everything was great, we don't have to do anything, so nothing would run. So one piece of electrical tape seems kind of silly, but now if I tie these together, which might be difficult to do one-handed, We'll just hold them, I guess. So now, we have flame in there. 
so how this whole thing works, right? This has got a fan switch on it too. So what happens is the temperature inside there in the combustion chamber will build up and naturally will raise the temperature of the whole unit. And there's a sensor up on top. When that sensor hits a certain temperature, it'll kick the fan on and it'll start blowing air from the backside, past the heat exchangers and through these louvers up here. But everything's working well. I'm at about uh, five inches of vacuum. I'm at about uh, three. PSI of oil pressure and uh, what do we got for air pressure? Let's see if I can read it from over here. About 15 PSI of oil pressure. Oh, and there's the fan just kicked on. So now, there's hot air coming out of here. I know you can't feel it, but there is hot air coming out of here. It honestly works fantastic. I, I'm super happy with it. I just gotta hook up the thermostat and we'll be done. So let's talk about the heater. 300,000 BTU, it's rated for, I don't know, well over 10,000 square feet. I only have a 1,200 square foot shop, but it's not insulated. I live in the Northeast, it gets very cold here. Uh, so I wanted something that could keep up with heating the shop, not having it insulated. I got a quote to get this building spray foam insulated and they wanted about $40,000 which is just, it's out of the realm of possibilities. So I figured, you know, getting the heater that's gonna run free, I mean, yes, there's electric cost, the electric to run the fan, but as far as the fuel source, it's free. So I wanted a nice big heater that was free to run and uh, throw enough heat to heat this place without having insulation in it. This is what I came up with, the Lanair, XT300. 300 stands for 300,000 BTU. They do make other models, 200, 100, 150, I think. So you can get the one that suits your needs. I just bought the biggest one because I figured, why not throw the most heat? When I bought this kit, it, uh, it came with everything that you needed. I mean, it came with the chimney kit, the copper line, everything. Like I had mentioned in the video, the only thing I had to get were two plugs. And that was a simple trip to the hardware store. I'm very happy with it. It's been running for about two weeks now. Unfortunately, it has gotten quite warm here where I'm at. Very unseasonably warm. So I haven't run it much in those two weeks, but in the time that I have run it on the 30 degree days, it was, it was too warm in here, which is a good thing because in the midst of winter when it's, you know, negative 10, negative 20, I want it to be like 60 in here. So hopefully that equates. I'm sure it will. If you guys are interested in used motor oil burners or waste oil burners, make sure you check out Lanair. I know there's a couple other companies out there, but I don't know if you get the lifetime support with those. This has got a 10 year warranty with lifetime support. I mean, you, you can't beat that, so. And when it comes to winter time in a couple months here, when it's really frigid outside, we'll do a test video. We'll take it, take the temperature outside, take the temperature inside, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn it on let it run for five, six, seven hours and just show you the temperature outside versus the temperature inside, hour one, hour two. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you're subscribed. Check out the videos that's gonna be coming in a couple months here. And until the next video, I hope you guys have a great day.